it is this commitment to competition and uh, helping consumers through uh, the advent of uh, Darwinian paranoia-inducing competition. That's really <laughs> what it's all about. It's about ensuring that uh, out in the marketplace, the, uh, <clears throat> the companies know that the consumer is king or queen and, uh, and, uh, and as a result uh, must have the best possible services at the lowest possible prices. And even as I sit here, um, I can actually see people who are looking at their wireless devices and not even looking up to listen to me. And <laughs> you know, we had one phone company, 1.2 million employees, conveniently with 3,000 employees in all 435 congressional districts. Uh, and so each of us was confronted with the exact same question, do we want to have more competition or do we not? Um, so it wasn't something that was regional, it was something that was more philosophical. Huh? What is the best way of ensuring that we unleash uh, a real revolution? Uh, but because we only had one phone company, the phone company, uh, consumers suffered, businesses suffered, innovation suffered. So I strongly supported the Justice Department efforts to break up AT&T. Uh, the professors at Harvard and MIT in the 70s were telling me that it could unleash an incredible data revolution in our society. Early on in my career, I had to take the politically counterintuitive position of backing the companies that did not exist yet uh, against the only company that did exist that had 1.2 million employees. In February of 1996, no homes in America had broadband. Just the blink of an eye, 18 years. Huh? Today, a 12-year-old believes it's a constitutional right to have, uh, right to have a 50-inch screen uh, with massive broadband interconnectivity uh, so that they can um, perhaps never leave their living room or their bedroom. Huh? That's, that's the goal of modern society. Uh, last night here at the Library of Congress, um, <clears throat> Doris Kearns Goodwin uh, spoke about her new book about Teddy Roosevelt uh, and William Howard Taft and the bully pulpit. And a big part of that book is about Teddy Roosevelt, the trust buster. How do you break up these conglomerates that get put together that stifle competition, that seek to extract uh, higher rents from ordinary consumers or other companies because uh, they are in a non-competitive relationship with the dominant uh, companies in the industry? Okay? And that's what she was talking about here tonight. Our phone network is moving away from traditional technology to uh, IP, to an internet protocol. Yet the tenets of the 1996 Act, promoting competition, expanding consumer choice, spurring economic growth, are as relevant and vital today as they were 18 years ago when President Clinton signed the bill into law. There have been some critics of the law suggesting that the 1996 Telecom Act was written about old rules, about an old network. They have suggested the bipartisan work we put into that bill no longer applies to telecommunications networks of today. But if it was just a bill about the old phone network, we would have simply held the bill signing in front of a phone booth or at a telephone switching center, but we didn't. <coughs> Instead, we signed the 1996 Telecom Act here in the Library of Congress, the American shrine of knowledge, of accessibility for everyone uh, to the information which they needed. So today, because of the 1996 Act, volumes of information extend beyond the stacks of the, book, of, of the books in the Jefferson Library, beyond the walls of this great building, and into the homes and the schools of every child in America, where they live, where they go to school. Today, kids growing up in Malden, Massachusetts can read the works of Jefferson on their iPad. The 1996 Act was the future then. The 1996 Act is the future today. The 1996 Act is the future tomorrow because it embraces and embodies the principles which are central to guaranteeing that we have an ongoing revolution in technology and accessibility within our society. 
When people in Washington talk about job creators, they are talking about all of you. You are the reason that innovation and investment will continue to drive our economy into the 21st century. That is why I have partnered with you over the years uh, to ensure that we continue to drive this agenda.